Good morning and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. It's good to have you all here in worship this morning uh, on this um, Sunday, August 30th. Um, <clears throat> just a few announcements before we get going this morning. Um, first of all, we believe that we have uh, figured out our radio transmitter. It only took a few weeks with the new toy, but um, we are now tuned to 93.5 FM. Uh, tested it, it should work. So just just so that you're aware if you're having, great, Todd is telling me that it's working. So at least in one, okay, so many cars. Thank you for the affirmation, I appreciate that. Um, so <clears throat> thank you for your patience with that. Um, so that will be um, available if the speakers aren't quite doing it for you, if you wanna roll up the windows and use the AC or something like that. Um, a few other announcements. Um, Coming up in the next few weeks here on um, September 10th from 6 to 7.30 uh, p.m. Um, Jeff Hakala of Thrivent Financial and myself are going to be at Zion's uh, Fire Ring um, in what we're calling um, Pursuing Your Passions, Leaving a Legacy. Now, to be clear at the outset, Thrivent isn't selling any products. I am not making um, a... Uh, bald-faced push for you to donate to Zion's Endowment Fund. That's not what this is about. It's thinking about um, what we're excited about, what gives us joy, what makes us passionate, um, and coming alongside those causes and how, um, especially thinking about in our um, legacy planning, how we can support the things that we care about. Um, there was, <clears throat> there's been great conversations um, associated with uh, Voyager's Lutheran uh, Ministries uh, and kind of hosting those conversations. So we thought we'd try those here. So our first one is um, September 10th. That's a Thursday, 6 to 7.30 by our fire ring there. There are only eight spots available, so make sure you uh, reserve your spot soon. A uh, few other announcements. Um, Dr. Vicki has informed me that the state fair apples are ready for picking and uh, you should not need a ladder. There's apple pickers um, inside of the um, enclosure for the community garden, or you can hand pick them yourselves. Although if you wanna bring a step ladder, just in case, I, that's okay too. Um, so <clears throat> be sure to just check the um, signage at the bottom that says State Fair. Also, they're gonna be one of the only ones that are red right now, so that's probably a good sign too. Um, one other, a uh, few other things. Uh, Confirmation Sunday is um, Sunday, September 13th. Uh, a couple of weeks back we had, uh, was that just last week? Ah, oh, my goodness, last week. Uh, we had a great, <clears throat> a great time um, with our uh, soon to be confirmants um, out at uh, the historic Scott House. Uh, so it was a lot of fun, uh, very exciting um, and uh, their faith statements are coming in, and those have been fun to read um, along the way. So September 13th, right here at 1030. Also, that same Sunday, we are kicking off Snazzy on Sunday now. <laughs> uh, it'll be 4 p.m. September 13th, right here uh, from 4 to 5. Uh, we're going through uh, the Lord's Prayer right now. Um, and so <clears throat> please do come for that. A lot of fun uh, singing and dancing and praying and um, all sorts of fun on your Sunday afternoon. So please uh, be aware of that. Also, we are uh, doing an outdoor version of uh, Hops and Harmony, September 13th, 6.30 at the historic Scott House. Uh, <clears throat> we won't be in the uh, stage coach, coach house, coach house, there we go. That's the word I wanted. Uh, we won't be out there. We'll be um, much like we're kind of gathered now in, in lawn chairs, socially distanced, masked, all of that. Um, <clears throat> just an opportunity to get together and sing as it, um, selfishly, it's been something I've been missing. So that's part of why it's happened. So uh, September 13th, <clears throat> um, 6.30 to 7.30 uh, p.m. Make sure to bring your own lawn chairs and your mask and have some fun and a hymnal, that'd be helpful. Um, we'll have some as well. Uh, finally, our <clears throat> newsletter should be coming out uh, this week, so keep an eye out for that. We do believe that we have resolved all of the missing names on the newsletter list. All the people that have said they haven't been getting them, we printed our labels and they are there. 
but we don't know what we don't know. So if you are continuing to not get the newsletter and you do not get uh, September's newsletter, let us know immediately so we can correct that. We had uh, an upgrade to our database system that knocked out uh, some of the names, which is super helpful. Um, so we've been slowly unraveling that mystery. So if you are continuing to not get it, it was not intentional, please let us know so we can uh, get you the information about what's going on in the life and ministries of Zion. Well, I'm out of stuff to say, so we're going to actually move on with the service here. Um, we'll continue <clears throat> with our uh, remembering our baptism and our opening hymn. Siblings in Christ, let us give thanks for the waters of baptism. In times of isolation, anxiety, and fear, we remember this unbreakable bond to each other and to Christ, who is our light and our salvation. Remember that you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now continue our service with Let Streams of Living Justice. It's hymn 710, and you should have received a revised insert um, for your bulletins. God, we thank you for your son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue now with our readings.
morning, everyone. Very nice to see you all here. That better? Okay. Nice to see you all here today. I know that we're all longing to get back into the sanctuary again, but I'm, it's really nice to see so many people here. I love it. And we got a beautiful day to celebrate. Our first reading today is from Jeremiah, the 15th chapter, verses 15 through 21. Oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down that retribution for me on my for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that your account, on your account, I will suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you filled, you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back. And if you shall stand before me, if the water what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It, <clears throat> it is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you of this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you with the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm today is Psalm 26, verses one through eight. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. Yes, I do. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I wash my I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Our second reading today is from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses nine through 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another and do not be haughty, but associate with the lonely. 
Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for it, what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible so far, as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in Listen, God is Calling. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. <clears throat> Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is <clears throat> to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It doesn't take much for my mind to wander off to strange new worlds, to think about new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. I'm of course, speaking of course, of Star Trek The Next Generation. Sorry, William Shatner. I found myself thinking about one episode in particular this past week. The crew of the Starship Enterprise are sent to investigate the disappearance of a science vessel called the Vico. Now the Vico was cataloging a strange phenomenon that causes these massive waves of gravitational energy and they hadn't been heard from in quite some time. When the Enterprise arrives on the scene, they discover the wreck of the Vico on the outskirts of the phenomenon. Its systems were offline and the front of the ship had been sheared completely off. The Enterprise sends over a search party to look for survivors and finds the 
entire crew of the Vico dead, all except a young boy, eight or nine years old. They rescue him, bring him aboard, and ask him what happened. The boy is severely shaken <clears throat> by the experience, but eventually is able to tell them that a strange vessel attacked the Vico and aliens and space helmets and energy weapons boarded the vessel to kill them all. <clears throat> he then said the ship went back into the gravity field. The crew, taking the boy at his word, pursue this hostile vessel heading directly into the gravitational waves. The ride is a bit bumpy at first, but the energy shields of the Enterprise are able to protect it at first. Yet as they go deeper, the waves become more energized, more intense, causing ever-increasing strain on the shields and the hull of the ship. The chief engineer responds by rerouting power to the shields to compensate and protect the ship, bringing ever more power to bear. Yet each time he does, the waves only become more powerful. More power, more power, they cry in their desperate struggle to hold the ship together. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. We pick up from last week in Matthew's Gospel, as Jesus expands on what it means for him to be the Messiah. And it isn't the conquering warrior king that Judah was expecting. Jesus was not planning to challenge Rome and Judah's enemies with more force, more power. No, he would be handed over. He would suffer and die. And now Peter would have none of this. No Messiah of his would be taken and killed in such an undignified way. And so he rebukes Jesus and tells him, God forbid it, this must never happen to you. Jesus has a rebuke of his own, his words cutting like a knife. Get behind me, Satan. Ouch. Jesus then lays out what following him will look like. And it isn't about getting a cushy or prestigious position as one of Jesus' trusted lieutenants. It's about self-denial, pain, and sacrifice. We must take up the cross and follow Jesus who carries his own cross to the place of the skull, Golgotha's hill. In reflecting on the nature of <clears throat> This cross we are called to bear. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, Man's plans are crossed by God's way, and this crossing point to that place in the world, where all human desires, ideas, and ways were crossed by God's way. It points to the cross of Christ, two directions, two ways, one crossed through the other. Man's will crossed and crucified by God's will. Man's defeat, God's victory. Man's end, God's beginning. Man's crucifixion, God's kingdom. Only the way of man which leads to the cross is the way which is directed by God, step by step, and which must finally lead through this cross to the life everlasting. Put more plainly, the cross, our cross to bear, is the realization that we as people and a society are profoundly broken. If we are honest, and we must be, we do not desire God's will or God's kingdom. We do not act with compassion, mercy, or grace. We worship and desire power, scrambling for more and more, driven wild by fear, anxiety, and scarcity. We find our cross as we are confronted with our estrangement from God, the God we claim to love. Yet we often do not accept this truth. 
accept the cross and what it means, and so instead we marshal our forces to overwhelm our enemies, crying, more power, more power. If we need any confirmation of this, we need only look to the headlines. As yet another black man, Jacob Blake, was shot in the back seven times in front of his children, under flimsy pretenses at best. Worse yet, two protesters are dead and another wounded after a 17-year-old vigilante took an assault rifle and matters into his own hands. And somehow he was not immediately arrested at the scene, despite walking directly at police with his rifle still in his hand. And he's even given a pass by the tone-deaf Kenosha chief of police, who victim-blamed the protesters by saying <clears throat> they wouldn't have been murdered if they hadn't broken curfew. What? And now we see the script playing out all over again, don't we? Protests in the street and violent responses to quell them. Send in the National Guard, more troops, more tear gas, more rubber bullets, more riot gear, more power, more power, more power. The Enterprise had rerouted every bit of available power to their shields as the next wave bore down upon them. They braced for impact, knowing they might well be shorn into pieces. It was then that the science officer had an idea. Drop the shields, he ordered. The bridge crew, the bridge crew was flabbergasted. What? Are you out of your mind? It's the only thing keeping us alive. But he was adamant, do it, drop the shields. And so they did. And as the wave reached them, it immediately dissipated and harmlessly rocked the ship as it passed by. The crew looked at him in amazement. How did he know? You see, the science officer explained that he realized that the waves got bigger and more powerful each time they increased their shield strength. He knew that they had to drop the shields or they would be destroyed. He realized that more power was not the answer. Jesus gets so upset with Peter because Peter hasn't been paying attention. Jesus hasn't been using this time to build an army, gaining military and political power to overwhelm the Romans. That isn't what this is about. Jesus knew that he wouldn't be any different, any better than the Romans if he simply supplanted their empire with his own. If he did that, then Jesus should have just gone ahead and bowed to Satan back in the wilderness. No, instead, Jesus is bringing an alternative vision. Jesus demonstrates power of a different sort, the power of lowering the shields and reaching out with compassion. Jesus knew that hate only breeds more hate. Violence begets violence until the whole world tears itself into pieces. Jesus carried the cross, the power, power in the sign of its opposite, to show us a different kind of power, a power that truly transforms. This is the power of God, the power of love that is unbreakable, not even in death. In truth, if we are to follow Jesus's example, it is a burden that kills us as well. Jesus knew this, but he also know, knew that we needed to die to our own stubborn will, to be crossed and crucified by God's will in order that we could find our lives and not lose them. 
You see, we <clears throat> need not be afraid because out of death, the death, death to the devil and all the lies and empty promises of earthly power, out of death, God brings resurrection and new life. More violence, more brutality, more power is not the answer. So dear siblings in Christ, let us walk the road laid out before us. Let us pick up our cross. Let us be crucified to our worship of power and violence, lest these tear us apart. Let us lose our lives, our lives as we have known them, so that we can find them in Christ Jesus. Dear siblings in Christ, more power, at least the power we have known, is not the answer. In the name of the crucified one, Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our service with You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore, hymn 817 in your musical insert.
Please join in as together we profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers today, um, you will find in your bulletin the prayers of intercession. Um, you will hear a variety of prayer petitions. After each petition, you will hear the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. You will also be prompted to sing the song, Lord, be glorified, which is on the back side of You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore in your musical insert. So I will give you a few moments to find that. Um, if you do have your hymnal with you, it is number 744 in the hymnal. Pastor CJ will be cantering along with that, um, so you will know when to sing the song. We will sing a variety of different verses, and that is printed in your bulletin as well. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. of all nations. You call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, salvation. 
you promised to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and your love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Especially Anita, Randy, Joyce, Alice, Dorothy, Rin, Arnelda, Phil, Tom, Linda, Neil, Gary, Jackie, Dwayne, Leah, Kathy, all those on our prayer list and those we name now both aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your church, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In your church, Lord, be glorified today. certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Please take time to share that peace with those with whom you are gathered or um, socially distanced appropriate, uh, the peace sign, air, chicken wing nudge, some lively and rousing horn honking perhaps. <laughs> And now let us give thanks for the tithes and offerings received and commend them to our good and gracious God. Let us pray. Giving God, we offer up these gifts to your glory and purpose. Lead us to be good stewards of this and all that you have graciously entrusted to our care. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We now sing our offertory song. We are an offering. It's hymn 692 in your uh, hymnals and also in your musical inserts. Use our lives, they are yours, we are 
We now continue our service with the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Um, you should have received um, a small uh, cup of grape juice, the wafer. Uh, the body is tucked in the top there. You just have to kind of peel them aside. I'd recommend you start now so that you'll be ready when we get to it. I will say the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, <clears throat> at which time you can take those. Um, and Dr. Vicky's coming around with extras if necessary. So be sure to raise your hand if you need it um, yet. Are they gluten-free? I do not believe so. Sorry about that. Um, also, if you are tuning in via the radio or online or on CAT7, um, you can feel free to continue our practice of virtual communion, um, getting a um, bread, um, and wine or grape juice and taking it along with us at that time. So we begin, or we continue with our words of institution and <clears throat> the Lord's Prayer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace this day and into life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your son. By your spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you again to everyone who um, came out this morning. Um, just a, f a couple of other things I wanted to take note of. There's a whole lot of uh, uh, faith formation announcements on the uh, announcement page, so do, do take a look um, at that. Um, also, this past uh, Friday and Saturday, we had our um, first ever in the Northeastern Minnesota Synod, um, Synod Assembly online. Um, and that went better than it could have, I will say. It went very well um, overall. And we have a new bishop-elect, bishop-elect, uh, bishop uh, Pastor Amy Odgren. Um, some of you might recognize that name. She came and did a, a stewardship talk uh, last fall. Um, she uh, comes with a wealth of experience. She was, or is still currently serving as the assistant to the bishop and uh, director for evangelical mission in our synod, um, also held a similar title, I believe in Northwest Wisconsin, um, has served rural and um, urban parishes, and so comes with a wealth of experience, has a great, um, 
just to give you a sense for a, a great uh, combination of um, down to earth and relatable, but knows her stuff um, and just is able to communicate that in an effective way. So really um, excited and rejoicing and very thankful for uh, the uh, 12 plus years uh, Bishop Tom Aiken um, has served this synod. Um, he had a very um, heartfelt and um, meaningful uh, parting message that I think um, encouraged us to continue um, as disciples of Christ to be um, the light of the world, as it says in Matthew 5. Uh, and thank you also <coughs> to um, Kyle and Carrie Terrio Johnson for serving as our uh, delegates to the uh, Synod Assembly. Also, Kyle was pulling double duty and he was uh, tech support as well, people calling in voting for bishop and other important offices. Um, so he, uh, he was working hard um, yesterday and Friday. Um, and also yours truly is elected to another three years on Synod Council, which meets uh, quarterly. So, um, you know, feather in your cap for Zion, I guess. So anyway, yeah, Woo! yeah. Yeah, it's a very powerful and prestigious position. Anyway, just wanted to make you aware of, of those things as well. So now we'll continue with um, and close with our benediction and closing hymn. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have our closing hymn. Will you come and follow me? 798 in your musical insert. We will sing the first four verses. Worship has ended. Let the service begin. Thanks be to God.